<laughs> hello, 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 hello. Um, we were just dancing to that intro music. Um, of course, the intro was done by Chris. It's pretty great, I think. Um, and I wanted to just say out loud the names of the musicians who are playing in that intro music. You might be able to tell, actually. Well, it does say, it does but just say. in case. It's um, Colin Farrell, right? Mm -hmm. on, on whistle. Mm -hmm. And um, Dave Curley on guitar. Yes. Two of our favorite musicians and people. Um, all right, so uh, last week, it may have been the case, we didn't do any data analysis, but it may have been the case that there was too much talking during the session. So we're may going to uh, not do that today, and we're actually going to get started off with a set of tunes just straight out of the gate. Um, and I was thinking, since we're going to do that, maybe we'll start with polkas, because we'll play them a little on the slow side and, and get warmed up here. Very good warm-up. Yeah, okay, so the tunes are... Uh, Bill Sullivan's in the key of A. I know some people play it in D, but we're going to do it in A. Um, and then the second one is a actually somewhat lesser known polka, but it's actually my favorite polka that I know, I think. Um, it's called Two to the Bar, and that one's an E minor. And then the second, oh, sorry, the third one is called Road to Boston, and that one's in D. Did I say that right? I think so. Okay, great. So grab your instruments. I know everybody's used to like having 10 minutes to just like, you know, chat. find their seat and put yeah. their stuff down and well, grab Hopefully you already did that. Yeah, I warned them in the chat, right. so hopefully, right. hopefully everybody's right. Um, okay. Here we go. Probably two times each, but we'll see how we feel when we get there. Um, okay. Uh, one. Oh, let's see. I should think about this before I count it off. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
ending there. Wow. <laughs> um, that was to make for, up for my fingers just playing a just a different chord. It was just not even in the in the space of D okay. major. There we it was all just. Do that something else something else to do um okay so welcome everybody i hope that everybody has had a chance to now find their seats in our infinite session circle here and get warmed up um now i'm going to do my usual little intros but i'm going to keep it really short i think most of the people who are coming to the virtual session these days have been here before but just in case you haven't um the way this works is um chris and i are live and alive think thankfully I think <laughs> yeah, okay. we are live here in um, our living room in lower Manhattan and we're going to have a whole bunch of guests. The number of guests keeps increasing. I think because we're only doing three, probably three, we might do one more, but we're not, it's, this isn't going to be a normal thing. So all the people who wanted to do it started piling on right. and I just have no ability to say no to anybody um, who wants to play. So we've got a lot of guests and the way that we pay those guests since tune supply is all about, um, creating paid work for musicians. That's that's one of the two reasons we exist. The other reason is to keep everybody um, around the world in the trad community um, hooked together through the internet. But the way we pay those musicians is through community contributions. Um, so that means all of you out there, or some of you, whoever can, um, the, the web address to go to is above Chris's head. Unfortunately, you can't click on his head. You can, but it will probably won't do anything. Won't it might anything. stop your YouTube video yeah. or something like that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, I'll put it in the chat and it's also down in the description of the video down there. And additionally, there's all sorts of other information down in the, in the description. While you're clicking around down there, you could subscribe to the YouTube oh, yeah. channel or like the video that yes. uh, helps us out immensely. I know it sounds silly, but it really does. It's so silly. Yeah. Every time I say things like that, I think, yeah, yeah. what sort of dystopian world are we yes. living in? Uh, but with a smile on our faces, we will yeah. say, yes, it does actually help, which is <laughs> strange. Anyways, yes, um, you can like the channel and, yeah, Facebook and all that sort of weird stuff. Um, last week, we had 500 people stop by the session at some point during the session. Very cool. Which was really cool, and I'm sure part of it was just because we haven't done it in a while, but... Right. Um, but thank you for yeah. stopping by, and I hope some. Uh, there's a 158 some of you people watching right now. So that's, that's awesome. Super cool. It's hard to tell on YouTube because the number that you guys see down there, that's like how many people are watching right at this moment. But after we're done, we can see how many people stopped in at some point. Obviously, most people, well, actually, here a lot of people watch the whole thing, but some people just watch for a half an hour or something. Yeah. And about 500 people stopped by last week. So amazing. From all over can the world. Imagine 500 too. people at a real session. No, it would be horrific. That would be horrific. That would be horrific. Yeah. Maybe horrific is not the right word. Yeah. It would be like the biggest symphonic session you had ever heard. You'd yeah. need a really good conductor. Yes. You could probably manage it. Perhaps. <laughs> okay. Um, the next thing on my list, it says right here on my paper, it says less talk, more tunes. Less talk, That's more a note tunes. to me. Okay. So, um, and I did contribution. So one last thing before we introduce our first guest of the night, and that is the themes for the evening. Um, we always have themes, which is just weird because no real session, or this is a real session. No in-person session that I know of has themes beyond dress as a tune for Halloween. But it's become a thing for us, and it's really fun. At least I like it. I don't know if Chris likes it, but I like it. And <laughs> sometimes some of them you like. Some of them are some good. Of, yeah. yeah. Um, and you guys sent us pictures, and we've got some great pictures this week. So there's actually two themes this week. The first one was is they're, they're both they're both fine. They're both uh, uh, totally acceptable. First one was um, favorite pandemic cl pandemic clothing acquisition. So I put that one out, and then I was like, Caitlin, that's like super capitalist consumerist let's not encourage that behavior necessarily right. so i so there's a secondary theme which is resilience okay so those are the two choices and people send in stuff for both of those and we'll show that show you that a little bit later and some of the artists um did things with the theme mm -hmm. including our first artist one of uh my favorite people um to be on tune display also just just to be with <laughs> she's great yeah. but she's done some stunning awesome very clever stuff for tunes play and this is no exception so without further ado i will introduce from um dublin she's in dublin right i think so yeah you know where she is right at this moment i'm not even joking she's in alaska oh yeah i did know that which is yeah well she's going to talk crazy. about that on the video yeah okay anyways uh um brenda castles from dublin ireland um will have your first set of tunes enjoy Hello everyone, how are you all doing? Uh, I'm delighted to be back playing a few tunes for Tune Supply, even though the circumstances are not what we would have wished for. 
Um, I believe the theme is our favourite pandemic clothing acquirement. And I'm wearing my favourite jumper that I got during the pandemic. It's American, it's Hollister, and I bought it in the summer, but it's kind of like a bit of a Christmas jumper as well. You can wear it any time of year. It's the best thing I ever bought. Um, so the other thing that I have in this video, that I'm wearing in this video, hashtag uh, hat from Decathlon. And um, I'm wearing that because I got caught in the snow this morning. Yes, it was snowing in Dublin this morning, which is not that common. Uh, definitely not anymore. Um, and I was out buying what might become my favourite pandemic clothing acquisition, um, a jacket uh, that has a battery pack in it that's going to heat me, um, which I got not for Dublin, let's be honest, but for Alaska, where I'm going next week to play another few tunes. So I believe this is... Um, you know, common tunes at reasonable speed. So um, definitely one really common tune, uh, one reasonably common tune. Uh, yeah, they're all pretty, pretty common. They're not run of the mill, I suppose. The first one is on Sushin Ba, on the white blanket. And I suppose blankets can be an item of clothing. And um, the second one then is the torn jacket. And um, the third one, the ladies pantalettes. Now, I'd love if people would put up pictures of their pantalettes. I don't know what pantalettes are. I don't think I have any. I'm definitely not wearing any. Um, <laughs> this is going south. <laughs> if anyone has pantalettes or knows what they are, you can post them in the comments uh, while I'm playing the ladies' pantalettes. So, uh, and uh, keep your minds clean. So I'll play these at a reasonable speed, I hope.
That was awesome, and I love um, Brenda's outfit. Um, if you were here last week, you might remember that we um, we made we cleared out a spot for toast on this shelf, and um, then we tried to put him there so he could sit there because earlier in the day he was sitting there, and then like the the moment we went to to the camera, he left and wouldn't come back. Yep. And now he's like he's uh, he's he's uh, now he just wants to snuggle. He's happy to sit here and say hello. So. He was walking around on the piano playing a tune. Yeah, he was during Brenda's yeah. set. Yeah. Um, well, maybe I'll just key, maybe I'll just hold him for a moment. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, okay. um, Kurt has suggested we produce Tune Supply pantalettes. It's a good thought. That is yeah, a great. A good thought. We should talk to Anna about that. idea. Yeah. Don't give me such ideas <laughs> because I will do them. <laughs> um, okay, and actually, that's that. Uh, you're. Um, uh, he's he's seeing into the future because uh, that's yeah. actually what I was going to talk about next. But first, uh, we were going to talk about our favorite clothing acquisitions um, during the pandemic for Chris and I. Um, and I know this is really, this is like the easiest, dumbest answer that I could have. But for real, my favorite one is any of the Tune Supply shirts. Not necessarily because of the shirts or the sweatshirts, though they are very soft and comfortable and we wear them all the time, um, but rather because of what they represent. Oh. What? No, I'm serious. <laughs> I'm not just making that up. Um, yeah, when I wear them, I feel like proud. Um, of of the community and us and everything that that has happened um in a terrible circumstance so there you go that's really i should like i was going to outlaw anybody from saying tune supply shirts did you know that but then i thought like if that's i shouldn't i shouldn't outlaw yeah. any favorite anything but but that's true now i do also like to obtain very um silly things and unique things you would never know you don't you know no. chris hasn't noticed that um but i did obtain recently in toronto um, an outfit that I have to share because um, it kind of actually goes with last week's theme of um, what was our theme last night? Ridiculousness? Um, no, absurdity. 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 Um, so I, I actually have it's a it's a it's a pair of pants and a t-shirt. Do we have it here? Yeah. Okay. So this this thrift store sold only like serious '80s style acid washed jeans, um, and so that's what I have on the bottom. And then the top is a two XL. Um, t-shirt that's been cut off to make a belly shirt and it has a portrait of the um, Obamas on it and this is like my favorite I think classic ridiculous yeah, acquisition and I actually have the pants here because I you actually can't see the back of the pants in the picture and I have to show them racing stripes racing stripes yeah now um, I tried them on just as a joke and I ended up buying them because they're actually really comfortable and I my mom and sister were here recently and I, w I was like you should try them on they're really comfortable and they were like no, I don't know. And then they put them on and they wouldn't take them off. Yeah. They're legitimately super They're, comfortable. Yeah. They look cozy. Um, okay. I was going to show my favorite yeah. okay. um, clothing acquisition of the pandemic, which is my lovely um, blue felt slippers, courtesy of Caitlin. That was a brilliant uh, Christmas gift, I think, or birthday gift. I can't remember. Slippers uh, are probably the best pandemic I wear them thing. basically all winter now. Yeah. So. They're so nice. And I like the color of them, yeah. too. I had to go and, like, search them out on eBay last year because there were no slippers available. Yeah. Because the pandemic hit, yeah. and then everybody was like, I need some slippers. Oh. Um, okay, Just great. So those are our items. Um, and on the subject of Tune Supply merchandise, now I feel like a complete, like, sellout going straight from that little speech that I gave into selling the merchandise. So yeah. I <laughs> feel... <laughs> Hmm, I should have separated those things. Um, okay, this does not negate anything I said pre pri prior, but if you were here last week, you might have heard that we were putting in a new order for the t-shirts and the sweatshirts because we ran out, and the proceeds from the sweatshirts and t-shirts are how Chris and I get a little money to buy things that we need for Tune Supply, um, like uh, equipment, <laughs> a lot of equipment, and and uh, Streaming uh, programs, and like paying <laughs> and $80 that. a month yeah. to MailChimp and all this sort of yeah. stuff. Anyways, um, we are putting on in a new order. Uh, right now until Thursday, because I'm, I'm going to place the order on Thursday, um, everything is listed as unlimited stock in the store so that you guys can buy any size or color that you want. Usually you, we can't do that because we don't have enough space in um, Tune Supply headquarters up in Alaska where the, where the merchandise is to keep everything. So if you want to order a specific thing, make sure we have it. Now is the time to do so. I will get a few extra things, but it's not going to be all the size and colors because we don't have space. So um, I'll put the link in the chat in just a second. And then the rest of the things on the store are not quite ready to go yet. I hoped I hoped to have them today, but I, I didn't. I was procrastinating this weekend. Um, but I we, we made a, a word, um, what are these called, word clouds? We made a word cloud to show you what is going to happen soon. Um, 
Uh, we did. Do we? Oh, oh, well, we have this too. Oh, sorry. Okay, okay. Yeah. that's there's the sweatshirts, all yeah. the colors, and I did put the names of the colors on the store. Some people were like, "What is that color? I can't tell." Yeah. So I put those on on the store. Um, okay. So oh, yeah, the word cloud, right? Here's yes. the word cloud. Um, tunograms. Yeah. Okay. So we're we're re rebranding with a much better name. Um, it used to be personalized uh, performances are now going to be called tunograms. You can order them from from any of our artists and they will send you videos of them, lessons, um, subscription series and books and CDs. Now I have to say a funny thing, Chris, <laughs> about this word cloud. What? <laughs> when I was telling you to put the words on the screen, yeah. um, I said, tunograms, return. And I meant the, that was gonna be like the, like go to the next paragraph. Oh. Um, not the word so, return. So it's not that the two grams return. <laughs> they are returning. So it actually, it actually works. But um, just that's take that like... <laughs> um, so that's people like... are pointing out, by the way, that <laughs> Toast is eating the plant in the background. Yes. Um, he does this all the time and it's okay. He's not going to get sick because he has no teeth <laughs> and therefore he can't actually eat the leaves. He can just taste them in his mouth. I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah he, like, the, the plant has no marks or anything on it. It's perfectly fine. Like he can't actually eat them. Yeah. So. He does it when he's hungry um, and annoys us enough that we give him yeah. food. So there you go. I'm sure it's entertaining to watch on the side of the screen. Okay, enough talking. Let's move on. Um, if you have questions about the merch or the store or whatever, put them in the chat and I will talk to you during this next set, which is actually going to be two um, guests back to back. So you don't have to hear me talking for a long while. First, the first person is Kevin Lees. Now, Kevin was on the session two times, I think. A couple, yeah. Um, he was recommended to us by, by one of you. I don't remember exactly who recommended him, but uh, he lives in Denmark and he is just a really good fiddle player. Um, he actually moved up to Norway for a while and I think he did a set of tunes from Norway for us yep. at one point, but now he's back in Denmark. So he's going to start off and then we will have um, Margot Krimmel. I know a lot of you are here to see Margot, so she'll be the second um, artist in the set and she is coming from... Denver, Colorado, I believe. Boulder, Is it Denver? Boulder? Colorado, Boulder? I think. Yeah. Tell us. I think she's in the in the chat. So tell us. Somewhere yeah. in Colorado. Boulder. Colorado. And I know there's lots of folks from Colorado, Colorado here. Um, so here we go. Enjoy. Good evening, everybody. Or good afternoon, morning, wherever you are in the world. Uh, I'm here in Denmark. It's a lovely, cold, crisp, frosty morning. Um, and I've got my fiddle, so I'm going to play a couple of tunes. Uh, first one is the well-known waltz called Margaret's Waltz, written by Patrick Sheldon Shaw. Um, and I'm going to play it in A major. Um, I know a lot of you probably play it in G major. Um, a major for this tune really suits the fiddle. So we're going to do it in A. Um, then we're going to go over into um, a nice steady reel, uh, one called the Reconciliation. Um, so... Enjoy these two tunes here. Here we go.
we are again, Mary O's virtual session, January 10th, 2022. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Caitlin. Thanks for getting us all together. And um, yeah, giving us a chance to play. So pandemic garment acquisition, that would be a new pair of cross country ski pants that also um, are great for winter hiking pockets in all the right places. They're awesome. And a new pair of winter hiking boots, very much needed and also awesome. And my red flannel light gown, very comfy, bringing me, bringing me lots of solace and comfort. Um, yeah, so a couple of old Carolyn tunes. First, Eleanor Plunkett in G and then Hewlett in D, and then um, we'll follow that with the Rolling Waves, also known as the Humors of Trim. We usually call it Humors of Trim here in Boulder. So Eleanor Plunkett.
That was gorgeous. Lovely. Really, really gorgeous. Margot, Ke Kevin, thank you very much. Guys. Uh, yes, every time Margot's been um, on the session, which has been maybe, I lost track of people who had been on the most, but Margot's probably in the top 10%, yeah, yeah, I'd sure. say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, just, it's just really nice. I have to, we have to get out sometime to um, play tunes like in Col Colorado yeah. with the Colorado folks. Yes. Um, because I know all your names. Actually, we met some of the Colorado folks at the El Flaherty retreat yes. in um, October, mm -hmm. was it? That was already, oh my gosh, that was yeah. already months ago. Um, okay, so a development occurred while, um, while Margot was playing. Um, Toast decided that he did, in fact, want to get onto the spot we made him, except there were other things there, but it, that didn't stop him. He just launched himself straight up there, startled us both, and things fell down. Anyways, we've, we've made his area, so we'll see how long he actually sits here, because we suspect that when we start playing, he might explode in hopefully a safe direction, hopefully it's not straight towards the camera. Yep, but never know. That would also be exciting <laughs> if that happened. Um, so actually, this is perfect because look what it says on my paper. It says toast report. Oh, so there Here's we go. the toast report. He knew, there he, is, he knew yeah. it was his spot. His um, turn. He wants more food, really. Yeah. He wants his extra pay. Um, I was also gonna, so, some people were asking about the Vanta Black. Um, I was, so my plan was that I was gonna go buy a banana and paint it with the Vanta Black paint. Um, if you recall last week, um, we introduced this paint that Chris got me. It's over there. Do you want to just get, grab the can, maybe? Like the, the metal oh, the can? can. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is the paint. It came from Japan, and it's the um, blackest of black paints that's available on the commercial market. It, it's kind of like Vanta Black, which is the blackest substance, mad made substance. Um, it, it captures, what is it, 99. Point Four I don't know. Percent. A lot of a visible light. Almost yeah. all the light. So last week we were having some um, experimentation with it and we painted in orange. And then I painted a can also. Now the can didn't work so good. I don't know. Now it looks pretty good. In the, it looks in good the, on camera. Less yeah. good in real life. but Yeah. It's, it isn't. I don't know. You guys can tell me what you think. Um, anyways. So and I was going to paint a banana for you. But um, we, we ran out of time. We ran out of time. So I'll, we'll do some more Vanta Black updates um, next time. Um, but for now, um, I think we're going to play some tunes. Uh, what are they? Oh, yes. Okay. These are tunes that were um, suggested or requested by the O'Reilly School of Irish Music. Um, you might recall that on November 1st, we did a, a virtual session in collaboration with the Riley School for their 20th anniversary, which was really fun. Um, and Nancy gave me their list of common tunes that they're playing uh, right now. So this is one of those sets, and I hope there's some Riley folks out there to join us. Um, this is the, the second tune in this set. I never play it as a reel. I always play it as like a slow march kind of thing. So this is new for me to play it a little faster. Um, we won't go too fast, of course. Toast is trying to figure out how to go, get down. This is going to get exciting real quick here. Um, the first tune is The Crooked Road to Dublin in G major. The second one is Donald Blue in D. D. And then The Musical Priest in B minor. And that one, remember, has three parts. Okay. We'll see what happens here. <laughs> three times each on these ones. Okay. Uh, one. Oh, oh, it's happening. Are you going? Oh my god, he's keeping us in suspense. Okay, we'll just start. Oh! <laughs> there he goes. Okay, uh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
name that the black cat set. Maybe. Yeah, something good, like good. that. Okay, that was pretty good. It's probably better that he left before the set started. Rather than in the middle. Right, yeah. rather than like onto yeah. your piano, um, that would be, yeah. that would probably be worse. I'm sure he'll be back. He's racing around the house like crazy right now. It's probably because I gave him drugs before we started. I probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Um, excellent, okay. Um, was there something else? Oh, I was gonna show this book, just oh, yeah. for fun, because um, my friend Richard up in Alaska, the same, the same friend who made the fake diploma, um, a doctoral diploma for me last week, um, sent us this book. I don't know if you've seen this book before. How to talk to your cats about gun safety. Important topics. It's very, very clever. Yeah. It, you know, it's it's a it's a joke book, but it's also like it's it's pretty clever. Yeah. So we had that up here. Um, actually, also the the cat that's on it kind of looks like my mom's new kitten. Do you see that? Oh yeah. Or maybe Ty's new kitten. Um. Anyways, I'll put it back up here. Okay. Um. What are we doing next? Oh, community pictures. Okay, so these are your pictures based on our two themes. Tonight. You know, we should have a community pictures theme, theme song that happens oh. every time that we... Oh, well, that's a good idea. Yeah. Like a game show should, kind yeah, of... Exactly, yeah. Well, we could probably make Like a little that. jingle that... Yeah. yeah. Um, who could... I bet James could make us one. James could make that, we should. Yeah. We should commission that. Um, um, okay. Great. Actually, so we got some good submissions. We haven't had any sound effects in a while. Oh, yeah. Should well, we maybe we should have um, a sound effect for community pictures. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. With that, we have Angela Botzer, her oh. favorite pandemic clothing acquisition. She says she wears it three times a week. I Yes. I mean, I do too. I'm not even joking. <laughs> Angela, thank you so much. And it was so great to meet you um, recently in Texas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, here's another Tunes of Ice. Oh my gosh. This is oh Clara up in Nova Scotia. Okay. Now Clara sent us pronunciation guide for her name, which I got wrong last time. And I actually am not sure if I have it right now, but let me try. And then she could tell me. Niforth? Clara, Clara Niforth. Niforth. Let's let's see if that yeah. is right. Okay. Great. And she has the red. Not many people have the red. Yeah. It's, looks very it's nice. A, it's very a rare cozy. color. Okay. Okay. Denise and Anchorage sent this up. Oh. This, this is was good. a gift from uh, her partner, Jim. That looks extremely cozy. Yeah. As, it looks like it goes all the way down to her feet. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> let's see. This is from Doug Wagner. Yes. Okay. Now he, he had a little story. He bought this. Um, and, and at the time he had two dogs, one of which was. Um, let, me, I, let me see if I can remember. One of which was shy of people, and the other one, um, I, I quote, he said the dog was a jerk. Oh. Um, and so this was for two purposes: to get to keep the dogs from the people, and also to keep the people from him. But he also wrote this in email, and I just wanted to tell you guys the last line of the email because it just it really struck me. He said, um, "Sad that we need to go back to virtual events, yet happy it is with people I like." And I was like, "Yes, yeah. that is how I That's feel accurate. as well." So. Thank you, Doug. Okay, Gordon Nash sent this in. Um, okay, so Gordon said that these, this, um, Gordon's on the right here, yes. and it, um, he has a folk music notebook um, um, sweatshirt on. He, uh, Gordon has a radio show um, and keeps in touch with us about um, awesome artists that he's putting on his radio show. He said that the only things he bought in the pandemic were this sweatshirt and socks, underwear, and shoes. That's pretty good. Um, we're doing an emergency toast removal right now, don't worry. We'll be back in just a second. Okay, okay, okay. okay everything's good. fine. Everything's, everything's fine. fine. Um, let's see. Julie A. playing outdoors in Gainesville, Florida. Yes, they played through the through the hot and the cold outdoors during the pandemic. Amazing. That's pretty cool. Okay, a couple from Kelly Manley. Oh, okay. Yes. You know the story here. Yes, this is a um, like a, a mask kind of for where when you're playing the whistle, and this is the before. She's holding a little. Um, uh, like a frame that keeps it out from your face. Oh, amazing. It goes underneath there. Yeah. And then the second, this shows her playing the whistle underneath. That's amazing. You know, yeah. we've seen some really creative wind instrument masks yes. on Tune Supply In and fact, related projects. You know where that is. I have Since we did the restart, I haven't put the link to the soundboard in oh, the chat. Yeah. So um, here you go. There's all sorts of weird and awesome goodies on that link on the soundboard. Okay. Okay, Mike and Juno sent this up. This is his Woodstock pile. This must be on the resilience theme, right? Yes, this is on the resilience theme. Uh, it's been a very, very snowy winter up in Alaska, um, like crazy amounts of snow, mm -hmm. uh, even for Alaska. Um, yeah. So he he is showing off his uh, wood pile for the for the winter. Here's some limoncello in process from Peter Rahill. This is not on either theme, although I suppose it could be on I think the resilience. It could be resilience, theme, yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, yes, this is his new batch of limoncello yeah. he's working on. Very good, Peter. Okay. Randy Klepper sent this in. Oh, yes, the canceled Celtic Fest. Okay, this is great, though. I don't know if you can see it. Um, oh, it's really tiny. Yeah, I, I can zoom in on okay. this. Okay, 
It says canceled due, due to, to the, the wee wee beasties. beasties. Amazing. <laughs> that was last year's festival. It didn't happen, but they still made the shirts. That's great. And then it did happen this year. Sally Anderson sent this in. Surviving social distancing one book at a time. I love that. And finally... Oh, this is my student from O'Flaherty's. Yes. Um, and she, that's her favorite uh, clothing item is um, the O'Flaherty shirt. And I, we didn't get O'Flaherty shirts. I don't know how we missed how out on miss that. that. I don't know. Huh. Um, but that looks like a soft shirt to me. And right. I told her that she gets um, 10 extra points for having a dog in the picture. Yep. And I think that was it. Great. Okay. And then we have also um, a, a video, which is actually not on either submission. theme. Yeah. It's just really cool. It's a video from... Um, Cow stove and it uh, well let's just let's just watch the video. So the owl was out practicing his tunes. You can hear the metronome going yeah. on in the background yeah. there. Um, and um, no, that's the clicker on Kasu's car. <laughs> so he pulled over to um, to take a video of that owl. Was it? What did he say? A bandit owl? What? Uh, uh, oh shoot! shoot. I, I didn't write it down. Um, we might have to go find that information now. There's too many emails. I can't find it. Okay, we'll let you know. Um, he said it's a little bit bigger than a hawk. To me, I couldn't tell if it was like a really tiny owl or. I can, find, said, I can find it. He it said it's a barred owl. Barred. B a r r e d. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, my mom, who is watching, I think her favorite animal is owls, so mm -hmm. I've always loved them as well. Um, okay, and then final note community um, contribution is actually from, from Peter Flory, and it's just a suggestion that we or somebody out there write a tune called the Omicron Hornpipe, spelled O apostrophe Micron. It's yeah, really I good, like actually. Yeah. Omicron Hornpipe. So if anybody wants to take that project up, I'll tell you what, if anybody writes it, I'll play it on session. How about that? That's good. We'll see, how, we'll see what that yields. Um, okay, so we are going to move on now to, um, oh, this is really cool. My friend Louisa Benyon, who I met here in New York when I first moved here 15 years ago, she was living here. And shortly thereafter, she moved to uh, France. Um, she's been there since, since then. Um, she has been doing some tune supply videos. In fact, you might remember she did a whole session, virtual session, um, all over France one one time. Uh, the road trip session. The road trip she, session. You know, she was taking us all across her massive road trip from one yeah. tip uh, to the other. And lots of different French musicians and everything. And yeah. so um, uh, she is joining with a friend who we haven't met yet. And in fact, um, I'm not going to attempt to say his name because as you all know, I'm terrible at pronunciation. No, neither of us speak French. Um, Louisa was kind enough to send us a pronunciation guide. Um, so I will give it my best shot. Um, Bertrand Luçon? That's pretty good. I don't know, but um, we're gonna play. We're gonna play Louis's um, pronunciation guide. Yeah. Bertrand Luçon. Okay. I don't know how those sounds. I don't know. Like, yeah. But uh, Louisa and her friend Bertrand. Oh, that's good. It's oh, not very good. That's <laughs> um, good. They have uh, a new duo called uh, Foxbox. Fox They're calling Fox. themselves Foxbox, which <laughs> is a so great good. name, and this is actually their first performance or video or anything that they really recorded. Or debut. Done. Yeah, their debut. Oh so, my gosh. Okay. We're thrilled to have them. Hey, Tune Suppliers, long time no see. I'm sorry that Omicron is wrecking everything and shutting down all the live sessions, but I'm kind of glad to be back here with you doing this. Uh, I'm Louisa, and I'm joining you from Brittany in France, and this is my friend Bertrand. Madame Trao, tu es d'où? I'm Breton. Uh, bonjour tout le monde, ça va bien? English. Okay, uh, hi everyone, uh, how are you doing? It's more like it. We have a new duo, and we're calling ourselves Foxbox. And we're going to play three jigs for you. We'll start out with the fair haired boy, then the sweet briar, and we'll finish up with get up old woman and shake yourself for everyone who's locked down. Okay, so let's shake it. <laughs> One, two,
Thanks, everybody. See you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Salut. Huh. Hello, are we choppy? Yeah, we're good. I don't no. know what was going on with that video. Sorry about that, guys. Very strange. Maybe yeah. that maybe that's how they have learned to move now. Yeah, They're maybe. They're just like yeah. kind of kind of like a squirrel. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, very strange. Um, well, that's odd. And maybe we will. Um, maybe we could pull that set out separately. Yeah. And post it just so there's like yeah, a. Yeah, yeah. I think the audio was fine as far as I can tell. Let us Seems know. Like it. Yeah out there what was going on we have some people Strange. watching now from bali okay I think. that's very cool i wasn't going to mention bali just yeah. yet because this just happened last night but i'm gonna talk about it because okay, because great. some people from bali are here yeah. okay so so last night at like really a much later hour than we should have been up i mean it was 3 30 a.m yeah um we were like getting ready to go to bed but we were like madly replying to youtube and facebook messages and stuff like that and chris saw a message from somebody in bali on one of the videos it was actually on manis mcguire's video yeah um and we were like hmm i wonder if there's any irish music in bali so we clicked into that guy's profile and there were like a hundred videos of him playing fiddle really well in bali and of um the session scene there and a band that he's in and it's amazing it's amazing and i we were just we got really energized at about 3 30 a.m and didn't go to bed until like after four because yeah. we were um like trying to figure out how to contact the people from bali and and all this sort of stuff so we did actually make contact with the fiddle player now i'm forgetting yeah. his name right now well he's in the comments oh here. he's here yeah rio oh rio Her yes. Herindo? Herindo? yes okay and then we said will you, will you come make a video for us on tune supply and um he said yes we have not discussed the specifics yeah. yet but we're gonna it's try gonna to happen yeah we're gonna try to get him on the session the session if he wants to be hopefully um sometime very soon um you guys should go check out the youtube channel though i will find it and put it in the chat there because it's great yeah good stuff what a i mean anywhere you go in the world there's irish music Always. Uh, it's it's so very cool um it's just interesting to see they're playing kind of outside like in a tropical sort of looking place right and i think of irish music as being like a cold weather sport but it's not it's it's everywhere so um, we will make that happen. Um, sorry, thank you uh, to Louisa and Bertrand. Ber Bertrand, Bertrand for joining us, and we'll get a, a clean copy of that video. I have no idea what was going on, but yeah. we will we will fix. Maybe that we up. should try to play the video again at the end of the session. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Right at the very end. Yeah, that's an excellent bonus, idea. Bonus. We'll try that. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So, um, I, uh, two little things here um, on the subject of resilience, which was the, the other theme. Um, I have to, th this is going to be a little tricky to, I, nobody, nobody noticed, I think, or commented on that I saw that there's a plant sitting right here. Um, I like to save plants, um, much to Chris's dismay. Um, this plant behind us, actually, that's getting too big was, was saved off of Pine Street, just uh, Spruce Street, Spruce Street, sorry, yeah. a, a couple blocks down the way, um, saved from freezing to death. And this was somebody, I can't remember who, but somebody sent me a gift, which was, um, a, a glass jar filled with soil and some seeds for these peppers. Um, and it's just like you just put the seeds in there and grow them. Well, the instruction said that you're supposed to put the seeds in there, 10 seeds, and then after like two weeks, you're supposed to um, prune them back to like the four strongest looking peppers, uh, plants. And then after another two weeks, you're supposed to prune it back to the one strongest. Well, I have a lot of trouble killing plants so I couldn't prune them back at all. And Chris was like, you need to follow the directions because if you don't, then bad things are gonna happen. And I was like, I can't kill the plants. So this is what happened. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I should have followed the, followed the instructions, but we did get some peppers off of it. And then somehow an aphid infestation came. We don't know where the aphids came because the plant was with us for like ha half a year, right? And then all of a sudden it was infested with aphids. I don't know. Anyways, it's been in quarantine over here and I've been manually picking off the aphids from it every day and trying to bring it back to life. So um, this is in the spirit of resilience, my, my pepper plant. Do you have anything to say about the pepper plant? No. <laughs> that says it all right there. Um, Okay, the peppers are quite good, though. We have used them in, in some cooking. Um, okay, and then I, on, on the theme of resilience, you know, the, the easiest or most um, uh, commonsensical way for me to talk about resilience is, is by talking about Alaskans and my childhood, of course. And I, I, there are so many stories I could tell, but I'm, I'm not going to do it, actually. I'm just going to share one picture, which I really like, because that could be a whole other thing. This is me um, meeting the winner of the Yukon Quest um, when I was in, let's see, third grade, fourth grade, I think, 
Um, that's Charlie Bolding who won won that year, and we each were writing to mushers um, that for during the whole race we would send them um, letters to, and they would get them at the checkpoints. And then um, the person whose musher won got to go down and, and meet them on on the frozen river and have their picture taken. It was in the newspaper, and I just that that picture of Charlie just kind of to me. Um, I mean, it says resilience. Uh, it's you know, yeah. old-fashioned st style of resilience and an old-fashioned style of mushing that, I, as I understand, doesn't exist too much anymore. Um, so, I mean, it just Alaskans are just so so resilient. Um, New Yorkers are too, actually. It's two of the most resilient types of people that I know in very different ways. Um, so, to all the Alaskans out there and to my family. Um, okay, and then I, I, on that same note, I asked my dad if he had any pictures that he would like to share on the subject of resilience. Um, my dad was born, well, he, where I, this is a secret, you're not supposed to know this, but he wasn't actually born in Alaska. He was accidentally born in a different state and that he, he has <laughs> not let his mom um, live that down his whole life. Um, but anyways, he grew up in, in a very, very off the grid part of Alaska, um, outside of a town called Tanagross, which is outside of Toke, which is outside of the Canadian border. Um, and he was homeschooled through high school and his dad was a pilot and his mom uh, ran a roadhouse and um, uh, homeschooled them all through through high school. Amazing, amazing childhood. Anyways, I asked him if he could share with me a picture regarding res resilience. And he, what he chose to send me was quite interesting. Actually, he sent me four pictures of airplane crashes, <laughs> which I thought was a interesting. I suppose like if the person uh, survives the airplane crash, it might be resilience. Otherwise, the plane is the resilient part, I guess. I'm not sure. Anyways, I'm going to show these four pictures. And while Chris is showing them, maybe show them for like 20 seconds each. I'm going to actually read a story that he sent to me about this first picture. Can you like zoom in right in the middle there, Chris? It's really hard to see, but right there in the center, there's a plane crashed, like a very old plane crash. And what I'm going to read to you is about that crash. And then there's a few other pictures that Chris will um, go through here. Okay, so this is for my dad. This is actually the best airplane crash persistence story I have, I guess. This is a B-24 that crashed in the Charlie River between here, which would be Fairbanks, I'm guessing, and Eagle during World War II. It was on a test flight in very cold temperatures, and they had a mechani mechanical failure that put the airplane in a spin there. Um, there were five people on board. Two people managed to jump out with parachutes. The other three guys rode to the ground. Leon Crane was the only one that was ever heard from again, or sorry, ever seen again. He spent 81 days walking from the wreck site in the Yukon, um, to the Yukon River. All he had when he parachuted was two books of matches and an experimental Eddie Bauer down suit that he was wearing. He lost his gloves. Temperatures were in the nine, um, negative 40s. He eventually found a trapper's cabin a week or so later that saved his life. We, um, he didn't know where he was, but after he had lived in the cabin for a few weeks, he happened to look at the back of a calendar there and uh, it had a map on it, which included the Charlie River, which he thought he might possibly be on. So he started walking down it. There was a book recently uh, written about it called 81 Days Below Zero. There used to be 50 caliber machine guns mounted on it when I was young, and I have one of the bullets from them. Um, they have since been removed by the military. Um, since bodies of the four men have never been found, the military finally did an archaeological dig there, I think about 20 years ago, and he recovered bone fragments and identifying things from three of the people, including the pilot. The guy that jumped out has never been found, nor was his parachute, although Leon saw it from the air as he was coming down. But that guy was wearing an electrically heated suit, so probably froze to death. The end. Yeah. So lots of resilience, persistence, yeah. and um, ingenuity um, up in Alaska, especially before the age of communications. I mean, that's what I was thinking there. Like, we, we might think, why didn't he just get his GPS out <laughs> or his satellite phone? Um, anyways, my dad has lots of stories like that. Actually, a lot that he's he was in. He was the main character. And so maybe he'll tell some stories another time for us. That would be great. Dad, I don't know if you're watching. But, whew, okay, let's move on. Um, where are we at? Oh, okay. Next, we have Mari Black up. Um, she is a fiddle player who has been on the session many times before and is, has um, provided some of our best themed content um, f during the whole session. Um, but I think she's playing today some jigs. Is that right? Jigs and reels. Excellent. Okay, here we go. 
Hello, Tune Supply Session Denizens. It's Mari Black coming to you from Boston, Massachusetts, a rather chilly Boston, Massachusetts, in which I have, as you can see, literally just come in from a run. This run was far colder and far longer than I wish it was, but now it is done, which makes it good. And that makes these not my favorite articles of clothing from the pandemic, rather far from, uh, but certainly my most useful articles of clothing from the pandemic because I, like perhaps many of you, have used this time to put in some miles that I definitely would not have done otherwise. So in that spirit, I'm going to play a set, or we rather, are going to play a set of my favorite workout inspired tunes, or workout related tunes perhaps. Um, let's do the old flail in the key of G. Let's do sleep soon in the morning, morning after the workout, A minor, and the high drive in the key of D. All right, here we go.
those are the best workout theme tune names that I can find, I think it's time we all go off and write some new tunes more appropriate to the genre, such as Oh God, My Feet Hurt, When Is This Going to Stop, and May Someday My Mile Time Go Down. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Uh, Mari saves the day from me telling a plane crash story and then having no plan for how to get Just out of no that. Just no out at all, Just really. Just straight in, yeah. straight into the tunes. You know, if <laughs> so there's... I was wondering where you're going with that. <laughs> if there's anybody who could save um, that moment, it would be it would be Mari or yeah. Brenda. Yeah. Don't yeah. you think? Yes. I can't really think of anybody else who could do it. And certainly not uh, me. No, and <laughs> not me, obviously, either. Um, you know who else could do it and would probably make a joke about it? Kevin Crawford. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but it's an elite group of people who can save the session from a plane crash story. Yes. So thank you, Mari. Um, we'll pay you double for that. That was really difficult. Um, <laughs> okay, excellent. We are to the poem. Now, don't worry, we're a little past the halfway point, but we put the poem a little bit past the halfway point today. Um, so we're going to have um, our resident poet, um, Mimi Buell, uh, tell us a poem that she wrote. She usually writes them on the day of, and um, as usual, I haven't seen it yet. Okay, here we go. Hi, Sessionistas. It's Mimi and Amos here with this week's very, very, very bad poem about favorite pandemic purchase of clothing. So let's give it a go. Hello, Sessionistas, both far and near. What's your favorite clothing you purchased this year? For Amos, t'was a parka. For when weather gets tough, it's warm, it's toasty, it looks like a cheese puff. For me, it was my blue light specs. They're supposed to reduce all ill effects from hours at laptop screen, tough on the sockets. And for German TV fans, they look kind of sprockets. Well, whatever you bought, whatever you sport, whether for winter snow or sunny resort, make it something you'll smile at when this is all done. Or I guess if you hate it, you could burn it for fun. So thank you, Caitlin and Chris, for everything you do and everything you are. Thanks to everybody who joined tonight's special session. Please chip in to the box if you possibly can. Um, any amount is valuable to Toon Supply. And please stay safe and eat your kibble. <laughs> oh, my God. I love when Amos was looking right into the camera. That was my favorite moment. Yeah. Um, excellent. I see that Amos has a great garment on too. That looks like maybe a, a windbreaker. That's his or... parka, his winter parka. Excellent. Yeah. I, I missed that. Sorry, I was yeah. looking at the comments. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still recovering from the, from my, my faux pas. My faux pas. <laughs> maybe you should talk for the rest if of the session. You, um, <laughs> if you have a few bucks, uh, we would love to take them off your hands. Um, in the normal session, we have this lovely tip jar that you can throw them into. But uh, during the pandemic, we have this lovely link that you can <laughs> go to. Um, don't click on that because it'll just pause your video. But the link is in the chat and yeah. it's in the description of the video. Um, yeah. You know, here, maybe I'll put it in the sure. chat. Yeah. Um, can you remind them about the shirts and t-shirts? Oh, yes. We have shirts um, like this lovely t-shirt that Caitlin is modeling. Um, and we have sweatshirts. And that order is going to go to the printer on Thursday. Thursday. So get your orders in if you uh, have been wanting a sweatshirt and we didn't have it in stock, now's your chance because we're going to do a big reorder from the printer and um, you, everything is unli unlimited stock right now. So It kind of sounds like we're want. giving like unlimited shirts out, I realized. Well, if you um, buy unlimited shirts, you order unlimited shirts. <laughs> yes, that's true. Um, yes, the unlimited stock is because we often don't have all of the size and colors. And then some people write to us and be like, hey, do you have the green one and extra large? And we don't. Yeah. So this is the time. Thank um, you, Harris. Turn that plane crash into plane cash. <laughs> oh, God. Uh -huh. I, I, people are going to be making fun of me of this yeah. for years. And it's totally, uh, rightfully so. it's totally deserved. It's yeah. totally deserved. OK. Um, great. And the contributions. OK, I just put the link in there. And if you ever, <laughs> I didn't see you put it on the screen. That's great. That um, money goes to help. Um, help us pay all of these nine or 10 guest artists that we have on yeah. the session um, tonight. Everyone, um, of course, gets paid to yes. create videos and content. So Every, Everybody who does anything on Toon Supply gets paid for it because that yes. is the reason for Toon Supply is to help keep um, musicians and artists generally uh, 
paid for their work during crazy times that we live in. So thank you very much uh, for helping out. Okay, um, what do we have? Oh, we have a, a, set, tunes, of, right? a set of horn pipes. Um, so these were requested. I can't remember who requested them, but somebody from the Mario's session, the local session here, requested. It might have been TJ. I don't remember. Um, anyways, Boys of Blue Hill, uh, which is in the key of D. Then we will do the Rights of Man in the key of E minor. And then Harvest Home. I Actually, Mimi requested Harvest Home. So this is for Mimi. Um, two times each on these.
That was great. Very nice. Very nice. Excellent job, Chris. That was so. That was so awesome. It's so much fun to play with Chris. Thank you. I recommend it. Um. Okay. Oh. <laughs> if my playing sounds a little odd tonight, I. I. Well, it always probably sounds a little odd. But <clears throat> anyways, I have, a, I have an excuse, and I was going to show you guys the other night. I was playing along in our Broadway show. It was the first show back after the third time that we had a temporary closure. Um, within the first 20 minutes of playing, um, this happened. Uh -oh. mm -mm. We need sad trombone's uh, we do sound need effect. Sad trombone. Yep, the tip broke off. And it just, it was usually, you know, I've heard of this happening when somebody like taps their bow on something or hits it accidentally. Mm -hmm. I was literally just playing a long note in the middle of number four. And um, all of a sudden, there was just like an explosion of hair in front of my face, and I had no idea what was going on. I thought actually that the hair had come out of the little plug, which which oh, yeah. is more common. Right. But nope, it was completely broken, and this is my good bow, my baby. Oh. So that's very sad. Um, anyways, I had another bow on stage with me, thankfully, and I played the rest of the show. But I'm playing on my friend Tom Bailey's bow, which he was very kind to come to the theater and give me make a bow trade off it was like we did a, did a drug deal wow. except for it was a bow deal yeah. um and i'm very grateful and it's a very nice bow but i'm not used to it so i'm right, kind of like right, right, right. what's going on here um anyways and the other instrument news i'm just going to show you this real quick because it's quite exciting oh, this do you want to show your no no it's next not, time no, okay next chris time. has yeah. a new instrument too but he'll do it next time okay this just came in the mail for me concertina Neither of us actually know um, how to play the concertina. I can play five tunes on the concertina. Yeah, yeah. It's very, very slowly. Slower it'll than guitars. It'll be a new project. Yes. Um, this was made um, by, oh, I forgot his name. What's his Kay Albrecht. Kay Albrecht in Germany. And it is really spectacular stunning, instrument. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, one of its reeds um, came kind of loose in, in shipping. So I'm not going to play it right now for you. But hopefully, Chris and I can get a duo at very... Ne maybe next time. Very slow yeah, things. maybe actually by next week we'll be able to play our new instruments. I can tell you what the tune's going to be right now. <laughs> yes. It's going to be Kahneman's Rambles yeah. at um, the slowest speed that you've ever played it at, if you want to practice for next time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, oh, it's words words time. Okay, we'll do words. Um, but it's is, also Burns time. Oh, it's Burns time and words yeah. time. Oh, my goodness, so many things. Let me do words first. Will that mess you up? No. Okay, and then people will have time to put their words mm. in. Okay, so we're going to do the word game really quickly. Um, this is where I select two words from my book of curious words, and Chris puts them on the screen, and you guys tell us what you think they mean. The sillier, the better. Okay, first one. Recumbentibus. Is that how you would say it? Yep. Recumbentibus. Okay, that's a noun. All right, and then the second one, you know, usually we have very long words, and I thought that this maybe would be a challenge, actually, to you guys to do a um, short word definition. It might actually be harder. Yeah. So zon, Z-A-W-N, noun. See what you can come up with there. Um, and while you're doing that, oh, there are prizes, as usual. Um, the prizes will be your choice of a tune on a shipping label, custom, very hand vulnerable. etched yeah. by Chris on mm -hmm. a shipping label. Engraved. Um, engraved, yes. Yeah. Or you can select a T-shirt from the from the store since we're putting in a putting in an order. Any, yeah, and for any, once you can get whatever size you need. Any size or color of any of the T-shirts that or the tank top. Um, yeah. Uh, you that yeah okay we'll pick two winners. Um, while you're doing that, um, there's an event coming up. Uh, if if there are any Scottish people out there or Scottish fans of Scottish culture, I bet there are. Maybe. Um, there's an, there's an event called, coming up called Burns Night, where we celebrate, um, the poet Robert Burns' birthday. I think it's on the 25th, technically, but, like, the whole of late January can be kind of Burns Night time. Mm -hmm. And usually I, and sometimes Chris, go on a tour, um, with a whiskey company, uh, doing Burns Night gigs all over the country. This year we're not doing it because, dun dun, COVID. So, um... The event is actually online and open to the public, and um, we have a little poster for it. It features uh, poetry, music, whiskey, and haggis. And I like three of those things. Which haggis, whiskey, <laughs> and poetry? No. Oh, okay. Um, and it's online. You can join from anywhere. Um, I think it costs 20 bucks or something like that. But if you want to splurge, there's a ticket that I think it costs 70 bucks or something, and they send you a burn supper box in the mail 
which does include some whiskey. And you, so you can participate from home with the like almost full experience of the Burns dinner, which generally does include haggis. I think that what they send you is haggis crisps. Like, yeah, because I don't otherwise, think you can actually really send haggis around. I don't think it's around. legal, actually. I don't think so. For real, like, I, I don't think it's legal to send haggis in the mail. Some of the ingredients aren't legal no. in the States, I think. Right, to, yeah. yeah, yes. Yeah. Like, sometimes we have to get illicit haggis for these right. events that we do. Right. Um, anyways, uh, it's run by Andy Weir, who was in Braveheart um, when he was a, a kid, which is so funny yes. to me. He's just the nicest, the nicest guy. Anyways, he made a little code for Tune Supply people. So I'm going to put the link to the tickets and the code for 10% off into the chat here in a minute. And if you come, you'll see Chris and I, and also uh, two of our colleague, our other Broadway colleagues who play trad music. And it's, it's fun. It it's was fun last year it's... your last, your first one? Uh, yeah. It was great. Yeah. Um, okay. Great. Okay. Now, while you're doing the word game, we're going to have our, our, um, oh, we have two more sets of guests. This one is Tim Britton and his set is quite long. So you will have a lot of time to put your words into the chat and we will announce the winners after, after Tim. Okay. Bye. Hi, this is Tim Britton coming to you from snowy Iowa with three piping jigs. The first two of which are from uh, the playing of Leo Rousam, late great piper uh, from the uh, LP, The Drones and the Chanters, a great collection of uh, many of the uh, better pipers of that particular era around 1970. And the uh, first tune is called My Darling Asleep, and the second one is called Whalens. And the third tune I got from Willie Clancy, and it's called My Former Wife. Hope you enjoy them.
Thanks very much. Lovely, Beautiful. Tim. That's great. Beautiful. I could listen to Tim's uh, playing just like uh, um, for, for hours on end. He always it's, sends us these long sets, and I love it because yeah. we get to luxuriate in the pipes for an extended uh, yes. period. Yes. I don't feel like everybody I would want to listen to for 10 minutes straight. Not myself. I wouldn't no. want to listen to myself for 10 minutes straight. But Tim also, well, Margo too. Yes. I mean, it's, everybody's so amazing on this on this session, as you all know. Okay, you all are way too good at this word game. We might have to like find a new game because the uh, people have gotten too good at the game yeah. um, and we have no idea how to pick the winners. But we did pick the winners. However, we picked three winners, which is against the rules, and we also picked two runner-ups. This has never been done before, but there's just too much goodness. Okay, so the two runner-ups. Um, dun, dun, dun. Mari Black with Zon. The sound produced when you try and yawn, but someone shoves a kazoo in your mouth mid-go. <laughs> and Mari had like 10 that could have been yeah, yeah, in the running. Yeah. So let's. I'll just say that. Okay. okay. And the second runner-up is Rick... No, he no. won. Uh, Julia. Julia Mullen. Julia Mullen. Zahn is a sleeping prawn. <laughs> <laughs> good. Oh, that's too um, good. Okay. okay, and then we have three winners. Three winners. Okay. Um, okay, so winner number one is Rick Boyce. Zahn, a yard in which zebras are kept. <laughs> yes. Congratulations, Rick. You're a big winner. Okay, winner number two is Larry um, Muti. Yeah, I don't know how to say his uh, recombenta bus, a bus that's rolled over on its side for a tummy <laughs> rub. Very nice. Okay, good. And our final winner, winner is winner. Our final winner <laughs> is Hannah Vidin Zahn, a mildly gummed fern leaf. Mastication often, but not limited to feline mouths. I mean, you can always win points with us for referencing toast yeah. or or animals in general. Actually, okay. all three of those reference yeah, yeah. Or like goings on in the session. Really goings good. on in the session. Yeah. yeah, that came in after we made our, our answers. And yeah. I, that's a really good one, too. I might have to use that. That tune is so zon. Is that, yeah. you, is it, is that the usage? No. I'm uh, not sure. I will have to ask Mari what yeah. the usage is. Okay, if you um, won. Okay, so Larry and uh, Hannah and Rick are our three winners. You can so choose. you can choose. It's hard to see these. You can choose... I don't know how I you do I honestly that. don't know why you would want this, but you can have sheet music printed <laughs> on a worthless mailing label, or you can have a nice t-shirt. You can you can peel it off and put it on something. We literally just print them on our printer that we print the mailing labels on. Okay, but the mailing label printer is actually probably my favorite acquisition of the pandemic. Yeah, it is good. It's really good. Um, or you can have, yeah, any of the t-shirt, not the sweatshirt, but any of anything any else. t-shirt, yeah. Um, in any color or size, so, but you have to tell us what you yeah. want. Yeah, so Larry... And Hannah and Rick, you have to send us an email. To this address. Caitlin's going to put the address in the chat. Send us an email if you want to claim your prize. Or you can, um, here, I'll put it up on the screen too. There it is. Tunes at tune.supply. That was fast. Yeah. Ah, magic. Um, um, great. Okay. One last announcement, very quick, and then we'll go to our final guests for tonight who are um, from Colombia. And actually, they might have gone to bed because I haven't seen them in the chat for a while. They're probably <laughs> waiting, waiting for us. Um, most of you know this already, but the Irish Arts Center, our friends at the Irish Arts Center are starting another um, semester, eight-week semester of classes. Um, they start either next week for Tuesday through Friday classes or the following week for Monday classes because next Monday is a holiday. Um, and I'm teaching... As you know, probably level two, four, and six. And then James Cleveland teaches level one and three, and Pat Mangan teaches level five. So all the fiddle classes are excellent. They're all online, they're all recorded. So if you miss one, or even some people I have don't even come to class, they just watch the videos. That's an interesting um, strategy. I mean, it's, it's it a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but be sure you should sign up soon because it does start soon. Um, and at least my level two class is getting pretty full. But I'll put the link to do that in the, in the chat, and I hope to see some of you there. Okay. Do you want to introduce the Colombians? Yeah. So yeah. Um, our final set is a uh, really, a really cool thing happened. We, Caitlin and I, went to Medellin, Colombia, in August of this year, um, just on a little week-long trip, and we brought our instruments and we played at a session there. And while we were there, we met um, a number of people, but including um, this guy Juan uh, Juan Esteban. And uh, Juan wrote to me the other day on Facebook and said, hey, I saw you doing virtual session. Maybe I can make video. And we said, yes, absolutely. So he's um, made a great video with us, uh, for us with two of his friends. So we have Juan Esteban Munera, Juan David Estrada, and Jean-Pierre Inostraza. Um, and they're from Medellin, Colombia, and they've put this set together. So I hope you enjoy. Hi there, friends. How is it going? 
Uh, this is Juan David. This is Jean Pierre. And my name is Juan Esteban. And we are some musicians from Medellin, Colombia. We've been playing Irish music uh, together for around seven and eight years, maybe. And today we're going to play for you a set that we learned from uh, Kevin Crawford, uh, Dylan Foley, and Colin Farrell. It's called uh, the first tune is called uh, The Drunk Engager, and then the second tune is called uh, Hardman's Fancy. And then we end up with The uh, Black Rogue. I really hope we enjoyed it, and that's it. Thank you for having us. Thank you. 
that was thanks awesome. guys that was fantastic yeah. really cool um most most of the people that have played um the session from other countries we haven't met yet and these guys yeah. actually met we met first we met, we met juan esteban and juan david at the session yeah yeah oh, it's, it's so cool um and uh i i just like there's been so many great things about tune supply in the middle of all the crap that's going on in the world but yeah. Um, uh, meeting and, and playing with people from other countries has been really exciting for us, and we hope to continue, continue doing that. And actually, Melinda Helfer just asked um, what the information was for the Balinese musicians, and their group is called Celtic Room Bali, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if you go on Instagram and search Celtic Room Bali, you'll come up with um, uh, their group, and then from there you can find them elsewhere. Yes. They've got YouTube channels as well. Um, and we'll try to get them on on the session as well if we can. Uh, okay, we've got oh, one. Mimi, oh. I, I was going to point this out too, but Mimi Mimi pointed it out. Um, Juan's got the same uh, Kevin hat, the Kevin Crawford hat. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we should we should uh, Mimi. I don't know if there's any more Kevin Crawford hats. Do you know about the Kevin Crawford hats? No. Um, I you know I wasn't at the session where this happened, but I think Mimi bought a bunch of Kevin Crawford hats Amazing. and had handed them out at the session before Kevin was there and Amazing. then everybody's wearing them. Tell me if that's the, that's the correct story, um, Mimi. Um, and actually, somebody earlier asked if Kevin had been on the virtual session. Yes. A number of times, right? Yeah. Um, he Near the beginning, I think he mm -hmm. got busy after a while, but near the beginning there were a bunch of sessions that he was on. There's, this is the 78th session and they're all available for free forever on the YouTube channel. Um, so you can go back and watch. Okay, we're really over time, like actually over time tonight. So let me just wrap up and then we'll play a final set of slip jigs um, suggested by the Mario's OG sessioneers. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I keep saying this and, and this will be the last session I say it on. Uh, don't forget to order your shirts if you wanna make sure that you get the certain size or color. We're gonna put the order in on Thursday. I will get some extra ones, but not one of everything. So just if you, if you have been wanting a shirt, go ahead and order it now. Um, mailing list. I just put the mailing list into the chat. That's how we're keeping in touch with people, especially um, because we don't know exactly what we're going to do next. Um, th this session will probably stop. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Just if you could get on the mailing list, we can keep you up to date on what's going to go on. And of course, Facebook, we post everything there. You can like us on YouTube and what else? Subscribe. 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 I don't know. Do all that stuff. Thank Insta you. <laughs> Instagram, etc. Um, uh, oh, and um, in our mailing list, I've, we've decided that we're going to send out um, a couple of like handpicked uh, community events that are happening um, in our mailing list, even if they're not related to Tune Supply. So if you um, have something going on that's online, you think the Tune Supply audience might like, send it to us and we can include it on the next mailing list that goes out. Because the point is to keep us all going through this whole thing. Uh, okay, last set. Kid on the Mountain, E minor. Um, Soggies, which is a tune that I learned from Kevin Burke. Mm -hmm. I don't know where, do you know anything about it? No. Yeah, Soggies. Okay, that's in the key of A major. And then Redekin's Mother in the key of D major. And that will end us off for tonight. All right. <laughs> On the fast side, both because it's the last set and because it's 9:57. Okay, ready? Oh, one, two, three. <laughs> Thank you. 
Jigs to end. That's that's it's bold, and um, I think it should be a new thing. Did you just call your own choice bold? I did. Okay. I did. All right. I. Uh, it's gotten to that point. Mm -hmm. um, okay, great. Thanks for saying to the end of this long session. Um, next week is um, going to be, uh, as of right now, the last of our set of our three pack of, of virtual sessions. We might try to add one more, but we don't count on that. We're things are all in the works, but hopefully we'll see you back at least for one more next week. The, the theme next week is one that I hope you all will enjoy, and that is puns. And I'm not actually sure how people would do picture puns, puns. But we'll see. What you could just send us a picture of words, I guess. Yeah. Or like I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, we have to read the just the uh, definitions of oh, the words. Oh, yes, the way. yes. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a good idea. I kind of like if we just leave it hanging and people are just like, they think that a zon is a lawn where zebra li yeah. live or whatever. Okay, okay, so these are the actual definitions of zon and what is it? Recumbentibus. Yes, right. Um, they're way less interesting. Recumbentibus is uh, a powerful or knockout blow. Okay. Okay. Uh, see, I like ours much better. It's, yeah. It's much better. Um, okay, now this is kind of interesting. Zon is a fissure or cave in a coastal cliff, and it comes from Cornish, the Cornish language, which predates English, and um, died out in 1777. Hmm. And But before it died out, they like wrote down all the stuff that the last um, living speaker um, had to say about Cornish, and now there are a couple um, hundred fluent speakers just from her dictionary. Isn't that yeah. amazing? Um, so there's all these words that they claim got into English from Cornish, which I've never heard of. Bucca, Gwag, Murian, Vug, and Zon. Have you ever heard of any of those words? No. <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, anyways, so those are your, those are your words. Zon so is, is kind of interesting. Our three winners um, who were, I have to remind myself, Larry and Hannah and Rick. Make sure you send us an email if you want to claim your prize. Mm -hmm. Um. Yes. Okay. And next week, there's. Um, well, I'm not even going to say all the people next week because it's there's it's like out of yeah. control. There's. Yeah. I think there's yeah. nine more people next week, including Aiden Connolly. If you've wa been waiting for Aiden to come back, which I have, um, he will be on the session next week. Um, and Alistair and I don't know. Now, I, okay, I'm not going to say all the names. It'll it'll be very exciting. Yes. So same time, same place. And um, do you want to do the thank yous? Yeah. Um, we had a great bunch of guests. Thank you, Margot and Louisa and Bertrand. And Mari Black, Kevin Lees in Denmark, Brenda Castles, Tim Britton, and Juan Esteban, Juan David, and Jean-Pierre in Medellin. Excellent. I think that's it, right? Yeah. And we're going to try to play Luisa and Bertrand's video one more time. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right? Before we go. Just so it's there. On the way out. Yeah. yeah. And, and during and that if time... If it fails, I'll... then it fails. Yeah. Well, maybe we could post it separately if it Yeah. If we'll it definitely fails. post it separately because it's really spectacular. Yeah. And um, yeah. Other okay. than that. Great. See you, uh, see you next week. All right. Hey, tune suppliers, long time no see. I'm sorry that Omicron is wrecking everything and shutting down all the live sessions, but I'm kind of glad to be back here with you doing this. Uh, I'm Louisa, and I'm joining you from Brittany in France, and this is my friend Bertrand. Mais d'un trou, tu es d'où? I'm Breton. Uh, bonjour tout le monde, ça va bien? English. Okay, uh, hi everyone, uh, how are you doing? It's more like it. We have a new duo, and we're calling ourselves Foxbox. And we're going to play three jigs for you. We'll start out with the fair haired boy, then the sweet briar, and we'll finish up with get up old woman and shake yourself for everyone who's locked down. Okay, so let's shake it. <laughs> One, two,
Thank you. Bye-bye. Salut.